you are being given a heaven track. You say, well, I already know I'm going to heaven. You're going to get one anyway. I want to tell you some things about it you may never thought about before. And while they're doing that, turn in your Bible to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. There are some things in the Bible that's kind of hard to explain. Jesus knew that whenever he said some of these things, that it was going to offend people. And you think, well, why did he say it if he knew it was going to offend people? Because, you see, you always are speaking, in most cases, to a mixed audience. Those who hang on every word and those that don't believe a word. So there's people that will believe what you have to say and there's people that don't believe what you have to say. When Jesus spoke, there were people that believed what he had to say and there's others that wanted to kill him. Hmm. I'm hoping there's nobody here that's wanted to kill me yet. You may not agree with everything that I say, but you don't have to get drastic about this thing. But there are times that we say things that are hard to be explained. And people don't always get it. I was um, with Gary one day and we, I mentioned this before, but there was something the guy said that I didn't mention to you. And anyway, I told him, I says, this coming Sunday I'm going to be using an illustration. And I want you to, to listen to it. And tell me if you can understand it. Because this is a, an illustration I want to use this Sunday. And I just want to know if I can just kind of practice on you. It only takes about a minute and a half. And both of the guys said, sure, go ahead. Of course, they didn't know that I do it every week. So I went through the little wall of the illustration. Explained it to them. And then when the guy, he looked at me and he says, now, make sure you do it real slow and clear. So everybody can really understand what you're saying. I says, good point. I'll try to do that. He has no idea how many times I have seen myself do that illustration for over 45 years. I was in a, a store and I talked to the guy, gave him a heaven track, and I didn't have much time and there was other people standing around and so I just kind of quickly just told him, I said, you know, you can trust Christ to save you, have eternal life and go to heaven when you die if you believe he did it for you and that you can't earn, you can't work for it. And I'm trying to say all of this here, I'm standing at the counter, and I done paid him, and he's got my money, and gave it, you know, my, uh, my change back. And so anyway, I walked out, and I thought, I, I bet he didn't get a thing I said. He probably didn't get one thing I said. So anyway, I walked out, and saw him another day. You know what he said to me? He says, he said, I told my priest what you said. And he made the statement. He said, I told him, I don't need the church here no more. I don't need you no more. He said, I found out it's been prepaid. I've never had nobody say it quite like that. I found out it was prepaid. And I was thinking, he, he didn't get what I said. Maybe, maybe, maybe he did get it. Do you understand that your salvation has been prepaid? You don't have to pay it. Somebody's already prepaid it. And all you got to do is accept it. And that sounds like it's so simple. But believe it or not, that's a hard, difficult thing for most people to grasp. They just can't believe it. That's too simple. It's too easy. You've got to do something. So look here in the Gospel of John in chapter 6. I want you to see this. We make the statement in verse 27. He says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Verse 28, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. That's what you are supposed to do. Believe on him whom God hath sent. In other words, trust him and him only. Him alone. That's all you have to do. But that's so simple. It can't be that easy. Because people have heard all their life, you have to be good to go to heaven. You have to live right. 
You've got to go to church and pay money and, you know, pray and all these things. And God says, it's free. Now, either it is free or you have to earn it. If you have to earn it, then you have to wait till you die to find out if you earned it enough by your good works. So they're making installments. They live today and they made a payment. They live the next day and they make another payment. So by your good life each day, you're hoping that you'll have paid for your salvation by the time you die and you get to go to heaven. I got news for you. It ain't going to work. God doesn't take it on installments. Christ, when he came to this earth, he died on the cross and paid the whole payment at one time. And that payment was made in full for everybody in the whole world. So it says there in verse 30, They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? What are you doing that we got to believe? I mean, if you, we got to believe on you, what, what, what are you going to do for us? Show us a sign. No, do a little miracle for us, and we'll believe it. And then he talks to them about bread. He says, in the Old Testament, he said, manna came down from God out of heaven. Bread. And fed to the people. He said, but the people who ate that bread, they're all dead. He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And if any man eat this bread, he'll never die. Can you believe this? Do you believe what I just said? Can you buy it? Can you trust me? I am the bread of heaven. You eat this bread and you'll have everlasting life. But you see, Christ wasn't talking about you really eating the flesh of him and drinking his blood. And that confused a lot of people. You see down there in verse 60, where he made the statement, Many therefore of his disciples, because you see, you can be a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, and never be saved. It means that you can follow his teachings. You can do the things that Jesus asked you to do, and still not go to heaven. You can be a learner, a disciple, a follower. But you don't trust him as your savior, he's not your savior. You must trust Jesus Christ as your payment for your sins. Trust him to take you to heaven when you die. So there were people who were following Jesus and mainly because they had seen some of his miracles where he fed the 5,000. So he says, the only reason you're following me is because I put food in your tummy. So he says there in the last part of verse 60, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Nobody can understand what you're saying. In other words, Jesus, you're speaking over our head. You're telling them we can't grasp. We can't get a hold of it. Well, some people did. Some people didn't. It's just like whenever we try to explain to people how to have eternal life. Some people get it. Some people don't get it. Because, see, a lot of people think that you have to earn your right to go to heaven. And they don't understand that Going to heaven is a gift. It's free. And all that you and I can do is accept the payment he made for us, and he would give us eternal life. Look down in verse 44. Same chapter. He said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. He said, Nobody can come unto me unless the Father draw him. Oh, that's interesting. A lot of predestination and Calvinists get a hold of that verse. But hold your place right here and look in chapter 12 of the same chapter, or the same book, but in chapter 12 of the Gospel of John, and look in verse 32. And Christ says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So the reason Christ says, nobody can come unto me unless the Father draw him, but the Father draws them because of the cross. You see, Christ, you see there in verse 33, this he said signifying by what death he would die. In other words, he was going to die on the cross, and if I be lifted up and I make a payment for the sins of the whole world, then I want to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person so that every person can be drawn by the power of the gospel. 
I was 18 years old living in Athens, Georgia, and a man told me this story, and it drew me to him. He draws a person to that story. Did you know the other day, a couple weeks ago, we had about 23 that went fishing out on this boat. And the water was a little bit like this, and a few people got a little like this. But for the most part, everybody had a great time. Did you know that out of 23 people, there were some old folks on that bus? I was one of them. There were some young folks on that, on that, did I say bus, on that boat? It was not a bus out there, it was a boat. And there was a young teenage girl that was on that boat. And there were people from all sizes in between and different ages. And there was men and there was women. And you know what? It didn't matter. The fish that was down in the water, they were looking up there and said, Hey, that's a girl. Don't bite that one. There's Yankee. Don't, don't bite that one. You see, the fish don't care. The fish was after only one thing. The bait. Anybody on the boat, out of 23 of us, if we was to take the bait and put it on the hook and put it in the water, the fish does the rest. Of course, we've got to draw it and pull it in. But every one of us, regardless of our age, regardless of how we looked or didn't look, tall, skinny, fat, plump, it don't matter, whatever you were. Everybody on the boat caught fish. Did you know that in life, every one of us as God's children can catch fish? You can catch fish. You see, the power is in the drawing power of that message. It doesn't matter who puts it out there. That story of the gospel is so powerful. It does the work. It will draw people to Christ. You don't have to save anybody. I have never saved anybody yet. But I do believe in dangling the bait in front of a person. And you never know who is going to bite and take the bait. I was told that there's, there's women in here that win people to Christ. There's individuals in here, people that win people to Christ. Everybody, anybody can do it, but you've got to have confidence in the bait that it'll work. And you've got to put it in the water. And many people never do. Does that sound so hard? It's just, well, that's just so hard. The reason we go fishing is because it's supposed to be so much fun. Fun, catching one. And I usually never catch fish. But this day I caught some fish. I had to throw some of them back. But I caught some fish. And I just know this. We caught them and they cleaned them. When we catch fish, we just catch them. God will clean them. I never try to clean the fish. I just let God do the cleaning. But God's word is so clear, so simple, that some people can't understand it. Because in their mind, they have been conditioned most of their life, you have to earn your way to heaven by the way that you live. And if you don't live right, you're not going to get to go. And so they think they have to do all these prayers, and they've got to do all these penance, and they've got to do this, and, got to, and none of that will work. <coughs> so you look there in the Scripture. I want you to look at John chapter 6 and verse 61, where it says, When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? Remember, they had asked a question. What do we have to do? He says, believe on him whom he hath sent. Okay, what do you mean by that? And he says, well, I'm, I'm like the bread, and if you eat this bread, you'll have everlasting life, and never hunger again. He says, I'm like water. When you drink this water that I give unto you, he says, it will be like a spring of water, springing up into everlasting life, and you'll never thirst again. And so he says up there in verse 47, look at verse 47, Verily, verily, or truthfully, truthfully, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, hath everlasting life. Okay, now that was a good statement. Now, well, what do you mean by that? They don't get it. 
He says, you trust me. Believe me. You accept me. See, the way to heaven is Christ. He's the only way that you and I will ever get there. He says, does this offend you? And evidently, it did offend a lot of people. Now look in verse 63. He explains what he was saying. It is the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He says, the words that I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. If you believe on me, trust me as your only hope to get to heaven, I will give you as a free gift everlasting life. He that believeth on me hath, present tense, everlasting life. If you believe it, you have something. What do you have? Everlasting life. Okay, what do you mean by that? Jesus is doing everything possible to make the human mind understand what he's saying. And did you realize that you can tell a lot of people the gospel story, the good news of how you can know that you have eternal life, know that you're going to heaven tonight, and they don't get it. And you wonder, what's, what's wrong up here? Don't you understand what he said? I wonder what the phrase, not of works, I wonder what that means. Not of works, to me, means not of works. If it says it is the gift of God, I'm entitled to believe it's the gift of God. Now, I, maybe I'm just made different than most people. I just believe that if God said it, that should settle it. And that's all that you have to do. Now, look in verse 31 of chapter 7. And verse 31 said, And many of the people, many of the people, believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than those which this man hath done? And then Jesus made a statement to them. He says in verse 34, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. Where I am, there that you cannot come. You'll seek for me, you won't find me. Where I am, you can't go. Those who believe can, and those that don't believe won't. And whenever he said in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. He said, and the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. He says, I am the way. I am the way. Me. It's not the church. It's not your good works. It's not keeping the Ten Commandments. Going to heaven is in a person. I must accept that person, the Lord Jesus Christ, as the one who died on that cross, paid for my sin, and trust him to take me to heaven whenever I die. And God says, I'll never cast you out and never lose you. Look there in verse 37, in John chapter 6, verse 37, where it says, And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So through the gospel message that we give to people, the bait we hang out there that says it's free. If you're hanging bait out there that says you must earn your way to heaven, that is a lie. And people will take that lie and run with that lie. And they'll think they have to earn their way to heaven by going to church and trying to earn the right to go to heaven. And God says that's the wrong bait. That's not the good news. That is a lie. God's the one that made heaven. God made hell. And he's the one that says how you get there. And he says it's free. What part of free don't a person understand? What part of not of works doesn't a person understand? And they said, you, you, this is so hard to understand. This is a hard saying. If you can't understand free, yeah, you got a problem. And if you don't accept Christ, no, you can't come. You will never go to heaven whenever you die. Now, you have been given a heaven track. I want you to look at this heaven track. This is a beautiful heaven track. On the front is my picture. See there? That's when I was 17 and had hair. See there? I drew it anyway. So it is my picture. But am I going to heaven? Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? You know, of all the things in all the world, that's the most important thing that you can ever know in your whole life. That's more important than knowing who your mama and your daddy is. It is. 
That's more important than know whether that, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. I, 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 I'm going to heaven when I die. Now open it up and look on the left. Instructions. Now look how hard these instructions are. This is very complicated. Check below what you think is necessary to get to heaven. So a person is supposed to check which one do you think you have to do to get to heaven. Now, normally I would give a person time, but because of the sake of time, I'm not going to give you time. I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you, because I want everybody in here to pass the test. If a person checks any of these except number 10, they failed. But look at number one. What's necessary to get to heaven? Do I have to keep the Ten Commandments? Hmm, that's a good question. Should I be sorry and confess all my sins to go to heaven? Sincerely do my best. Stop sinning. Oh, that's a good one. Do good deeds. Give money to the church. Only if it's Calvary Community Church. <laughs> Water baptism, communion. All, well, that, those are good things. But now, is that what you have to do to go to heaven? I don't believe in heaven or hell. You say, well, I don't believe in heaven or hell. Okay, that just did away with that, didn't it? I mean, I don't believe in God, so that just did away with God. God doesn't exist because I said I don't believe in Him. I asked a man one time, I said, where are you going to go when you die? He says, Tennessee. I said, do you understand my question? He says, yeah, you asked me where I'm going to go when I die. He said, Tennessee. I said, why? He said, because that's where my burial plot is. I asked a man one time, I says, do you know where you're going to go when you die? He says, to the grave. I says, and then where are you going to go? He says, that's as far as I'm going. I said, you ain't going any further. No further. That's as far as I'm going. I said, have you ever died before? He says, no. I said, then how do you know that's as far as you're going to get? He said, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, water baptism or communion, I don't believe in hell. Nine, trust in Christ and serve him. Oh, now that's, that's got to be it right there. Trust in Christ and serve him. You see, if you trust Christ to take you to heaven, then why do you have to serve him? Can I have one without the other? See, you can serve Christ and never trust him. But can I trust Christ to take me to heaven and then say, along with that, and patch onto it, I've got to live right too. And if I don't live right, then I won't make it. What you do is this, take all of your good works, from this day forward, take all of your good works and throw them in the trash can. And all you got left is your bad works, all your sins. Can you still go to heaven? You can if you trusted Christ as Savior. People say, well, you don't deserve that. I don't deserve it anyway. I have never deserved to go to heaven. Look down there at Answers from the Bible. When Christ says to believe on me, is, it's like, okay, he is going to speak. He's going to say something, and I want you to see, can you believe him? Can you take him at his word? Look at number one. Trying to keep the Ten Commandments cannot save us, but they do show that we're all sinners. He says in James 2.10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Can, can you believe that? Can you buy that? That if you kept the whole law, but you break one of them, you're condemned. You're guilty as if you broke all of them. Why? Because the same penalty, death. You're going to die. And because God's law is perfect, the problem is we're not. So no man has ever lived good enough to keep the whole law. No man. No woman. We've all sinned, and we've all come short of God's perfection. So... That's what God says. Now, can you believe that? That's so simple. That you and I cannot keep the law. We're guilty. Believe it. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. Uh, look at number two. Being sorry for sins or confessing sins to God does not take away your sin. You see, you don't have to... Well, you can be sorry you've done all kind of bad things, but now to go to heaven... Do you have to confess all of your sins? There's a problem. Think hard. So how do you think hard? Mm. Can you remember all of your sins? What if you can't remember them all, so you can't confess them all? 
It's all your sins is just the ones you remember. Is it possible that you've done things a long time ago and you forgot all about it? But what if you don't confess those sins? And you've been thinking all along, I'm going to heaven because I confessed all my sins. Could you have forgotten some? So you see, that's, that's not true. You see, to go to heaven, you confess you are a sinner. That's what I am. When you talk about, okay, I am, I am an apple tree. An apple tree has apples on the tree. I don't have to confess all the apples on the tree. I just have to confess I'm an apple tree. After I've trusted Christ as my Savior, and I know I have eternal life, and I'm going to heaven and I die, God says, as those apples uh, grow on my tree, I'm supposed to pick those apples off that tree. But it doesn't change that old tree. It's because once you trust Christ as Savior, you become God's child, and you have eternal life, and you go into heaven and you die. You still have your old sinful nature that still produces the apples on the tree. And God says, if we as a child of God will confess our sins to God, He is faithful and just to forgive us. That's to the Christian, not to the lost man. So we want a lost man to admit, I am a sinner and cannot save myself. So simple. But look what he says here. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The payment for sin is death. And that's why everybody dies, because everybody earned, earned the right to die. Wage of sin is death. We've all sinned, so we have earned the right to die. Now, what man has earned the right to go to heaven? There is no such person. So nobody deserves to go to heaven. We all deserve to go to hell. But none of us deserve to go to heaven. So when Christ died for us, and doesn't let us go to hell, that's mercy. I don't get what I deserve. That's what I deserve, but I didn't get it. I got mercy. You see, getting to go to heaven, oh, that's grace. It means that I don't deserve that, but I get it. That's grace. So grace and mercy. Look at number three and four. Doing your best or trying to stop sinning would be great if it were possible. Since heaven is perfect, we must also be perfect to go there. Revelation 21, 27 says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. No sin can enter into that holy city because it's a perfect place. It's a holy place. That's why you and I, we cannot save ourselves. You'll never be good enough. And that's why... Trying to turn from your sins is not going to work. Trying to do your best is not going to work. All of it is good intentions. It would be nice if we could, but we can't. Even today, there's things that you know that is right to do. But you'd be surprised how many will do things in spite of it. You'll do it wrong anyway. You know you're not supposed to do certain things and you'll still do it. It's called our old sinful nature. We were born with it. And we'll die with it. Number five and six. Look at five and six. No good deeds or money given to churches can take away sin. Because, you see, the only thing that takes away sin is understanding and believing in. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, talking about the Lord. And, in, and the Lord hath by himself, hath by himself, hath by himself purged our sins. By himself. It means Jesus Christ by himself Paid for our sins. You didn't help him. Nobody else has ever done it. Christ died for all the sins of all the world. Like I've said before. If Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Then why do I have to go to hell and pay for any of them? Even one. Why should I have to pay for sin if he paid for it? It's because you didn't believe he did it for you. See the only work God requires of you is. Will you believe on Jesus Christ? And God says that just believing is not a work. It's amazing. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. He that believeth on him. Well, that works. He that believeth is justified from all things. From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Look at number... Well, I want you to see these scriptures because this is so important. These are two of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. A lot of verses in the Bible. But you'll notice there... In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved, through faith. 
that not of yourselves. Now what part of not of yourself would you not understand? It's not of yourself. It means God's not going to let you go to heaven because of what you have done. He says, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of what? Not of work, why? Lest any man should boast. In other words, I can't stand up here and say, I'm going to heaven because I'm better than you are. I'm not better than you. You're not better than I am. We're all sinners. We all come short of God's perfection, and there's no difference. So when Christ died, he died for everybody in the whole world so that we could simply just believe and trust him, except what he did for us. Pride keeps a man from doing that because we want to do something we feel like I've got to do something I've got to help and God said I don't need your help it's not of your works so he says not of works lest any man should boast now look at number seven water baptism or communion cannot pay for sin water will not wash the dirt off your neck if you don't use soap with it and it doesn't wash away one sin if washing away your sin is done by being baptized, then why did Christ die? Just go take a bath. I've had a much, many of those, so I'm pretty clean. Because I've been baptized every time I took a bath. That's not what he's talking about. Water baptism is a picture of something. You see, whenever you stand in the water, it's a picture of Christ on the cross. When you go under the water, that's a picture of your burial. When you come up out of the water, that's a picture of your resurrection. So when you believe that he died on that cross, paid for your sins, came back from the dead, when you believe that, then God said, I want you to be baptized in water. And that is a picture of what you inwardly believe. But if you don't believe that, then you should not be water baptized. That's why baptism is only for believers. You'll never find in the Bible where babies and infants are baptized. It's an ungodly thing. You can't find one verse in the Bible that says to do that. That's because some people believe, well, I think that's what you ought to do. And so they baptize little babies. And little babies grow up and say, well, I've been, I've been confirmed and I've been, uh, I've been baptized and I've been a member of the church. And that ain't going to get you anywhere. That ain't even going to help. All that is is nothing but false bait. That you latch on to and you'll believe that and die that way. And God has all this good news over here. Hey look, it's free. I paid for it. All you have to do is accept it. It's prepaid. Prepaid. You don't have to make installments. It's prepaid. It's already done. All you have to do is believe that Christ did it on the cross for you. Look at the next verse. In Titus 3, 5, look what he says. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Look at that verse again. Not, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Can you understand what he just said? That is so simple. That is so clear. And remember, this message is what God uses to draw a person to trust in Christ. If this doesn't get you to trust Christ, you have no hope. There is no other way. It's not like you've got options up there. There are no other options. There's only one thing that you have to do, and that is, will you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Look at number eight real quick. To believe there is a heaven or hell, one must believe there is a God. Because in the Bible, it's the only place that tells us about heaven and hell. And when Christ was here, he spoke more on hell than he spoke on heaven. And you do not need someone to die on the cross and pay for your sins to keep you from going to a place if it don't exist. So yes, I believe there's a God, and I believe there's a heaven, and I believe there's a hell. Look at number eight. To believe there is a heaven or hell, one must believe that there is a God. I cannot make a person believe that except to say what God says. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. God says, a fool says, there is no God. And I would rather trust what God says than what people tell me. 
So if you say there is no God, okay, you're a fool. Who says God says? God says you're a fool. You say, well, I don't like that. It doesn't matter what I... It's between you and God. You know the one that doesn't exist? Tell him. But see, I do believe that there is a God. And my belief in your unbelief doesn't produce God. God is. Look at number nine. This is incorrect. And what was number nine? Trust in Christ and serve Him. You see, the and serve Him annuls the other. What it means is this. If going to heaven is free, then you can't earn it. But if you have to earn it, it can't be free. So trusting Christ, that's free. But you've got to serve Him, then it's not free. It's a contradiction. And it won't work. You must trust Christ and Him alone. Put no hope, no confidence in your good life. Do not trust in you. The Bible says, Cursed is the man who putteth his confidence in man. Man cannot save you. I can't save you. This church can't save you. Your money can't save you. Only Christ can save you. And He is the Son of the living God. Look at number 9 again. To trust in Christ is to be saved by grace without charge. To include serving Him would mean you must add works to something that's free. That would contradict what the Bible says. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it can be no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. That's actually a verse in the Bible that says that. In other words, it's got to be by grace or it's got to be by works. But it can't be both. Because one annuls the other. It's free or it's by your works. But which way is it? God says, by grace are you saved. So it is by grace. It is the best news in all the world. Look down there, the last uh, chapter on that page there. Number 10, what is the correct answer? Yes, this is the only way to get to heaven. The only way is, to, is the easiest way. All you have to do is believe and that Christ died on that cross, paid for all of your sins, and rose again to give to you at the very moment you trust Him the free gift of eternal life. Now, He gives us a verse. The most well-known quoted verse in all the world, John 3, 16. But look at it. He says, For God so loved, and the rest of that says, For God so loved the world. But what I want you to do is put your name there. Put your name there. I would read that this way. For God so loved Yankee, me, that he gave his only begotten son. Now, if your name is John, you would put in there, for God so loved John, that he gave his only begotten son. Maybe your name's Mary. Okay. For God so loved Mary, that he gave his only begotten son. Get to, that whosoever, anybody, it doesn't matter who it is, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So when you believe it, God gives you everlasting life. And we read that verse a while ago that said, He'll never cast you out. Never cast you out. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath, right now, present and hath, everlasting life. You mean if I accept Christ right now as my Savior, God will give me right now everlasting life. That's what He said. And that means I'll go to heaven whenever I die. That's, that's true. And if I don't live right, I'm still going to go to heaven. That's true. If, if that's true, then that means I can go out here and live like the devil and still go to heaven when I die. That's true, too. Yes, that's true. Well, that don't sound right. Didn't say it had to sound right. I didn't design this, and I'm not going to lie to a person to try to get them to and soften I can't soften it. I can't change it. You can still go out here today and live like the devil, can't you? Most of you in this room probably already do that. Just joking. Don't you already do whatever you want to do? Most people do. But wouldn't it be better to know that you have eternal life and going to heaven? Did you know that the power of this message has the power that when you accept it, it can change your life? There's power in this message. When I understood that God loved me and died for me and gave me eternal life and I was His child... Something happened to me that I've never been able to explain. I have wanted to please the one 
who died for me. I serve the Lord, yes. I've disciplined my life. I try to live the way God wants me to live, but I don't do it to get to heaven. I'm doing it because I'm going to heaven. I am His child. And I just believe if I'm a child of God, I should live like it and act like it and talk like it. But I'm not doing it to be His child. I was born into His family 50 years ago. I have eternal life and I'm going to heaven whenever I die. If I never darken the doors to another church, never give a penny, I'm still going to go to heaven. You say, you don't deserve it. I know. By grace are you saved. Grace. Either it is or it's not. Either I can know I have eternal life and go to heaven or I can't. And the only reason I won't be able to know for sure is it depends on me because I won't know how I'm going to perform down the road. So God says it's free so that everybody can have it. Now look down here. What should I do? What should I, if all this is true, what should I do? Doesn't it make sense to trust the only one who came back from the dead as your only hope of going to heaven? Right now, tell the Lord that you believe that He paid for your sins, that you trust Him to take you to heaven when you die. When can you do that? You can do it right now. You mean while I'm talking? Yeah, while I'm talking. While you're sitting right there in your own mind, you can say, Lord, I don't understand it all, but I believe what your word says. I believe you died for me. And I'm going to trust you to take me to heaven when I die. And God said, if you trust him right now, he saves you right now, gives you eternal life right now. When you get up to leave, you can say, I know I'm going to heaven because today I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my only hope of going to heaven. And he said he'll never cast you out and never lose you. That's the best news in all the world. Look at this as we close. Down at the bottom, there's a verse, 1 John 5, 13. Oh, I love this verse. This is what it says. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know, know, know that you have what? Eternal life. So can you know you have eternal life? Yes. That's why it was written, so that you can know it. You see, if you're going to heaven depends upon how you live, then you can't know it until you die. Okay, what are you going to do when you find out, okay, you didn't make it. Now what are you going to do? A little late, isn't it? I would rather live my life knowing that I have eternal life and knowing that I'm going to heaven because I'll, it doesn't matter when I die. It doesn't matter how I die. I'm going to heaven. And I've known it for 50 years. That's worth telling people about. This is good news. This good news is powerful enough to break any man down, any woman down. It helps them to see through the religion in the world. See, there's thousands of religions. But religion can't save a man. It was religion that put Christ on the cross. But the common people heard him every day and accepted it. Look on the back page. Now that I believe, if you believe it, God said he'll never cast you out and he'll never lose you. Isn't that good news? As a child of God, as a child of God, it is the will of God that I serve him. But I don't serve the Lord to go to heaven. I do it because I want God's blessing in my life now. And he said he'll reward me when I get to heaven. See, going to heaven, that's free. What I have when I get there depends upon what I do for him. So God said if I would serve him, he would honor my life. And he'd bless my life. And that he's done. And that's the best news that I've ever heard in my whole cotton-picking life. Now, I gave you one of these. But now you know how to use it. And so I expect, I expect every one of y'all to be carrying tracks from now on. Not any kind of track, a heaven track. It's the clearest I have ever seen. It's big enough that you can read it and understand it and explain it to people. Now look up here. Because we've got to quit now. They always tell me on the third Sunday, make sure you go to 12 o'clock because they're getting food ready. So that's the only reason I've taken so long. I'm usually out of here half an hour earlier. That was a lie, wasn't it? Oh, boy. I'm glad I'm still going to heaven. I'm so glad Christ paid for that lie. Look up here. This is you and me. While it represents sin, we've all got sin on us. God loves us, but he hates our sin. And for us to pay for the sin is eternal separation from God in hell. But God loves us and wants us to go to heaven. But to go to heaven, you have to be perfect, as righteous as God, and nobody's perfect. God says you can't earn it, you can't work for it. It's not by your works. You must believe on Him. Well, what did He do? What did He say? Well, 
this hand represents Jesus Christ. He's God in the flesh. He came into the world because he loves us. Hates our sin because it separates us from him. So Jesus Christ took the sin, paid for it on the cross, came back from dead. Said if we believe he did it for us, he'd put that payment to our account and we get to go to heaven on what Jesus Christ did. There's no tricks to it. There's no gimmicks. If I offered you this microphone and you accepted, you'd have a microphone. If I offered you my wallet and you accepted, you'd have an empty wallet. If Christ walked in here right now, offered you eternal life and you accepted, you would have eternal life. And if it's eternal life, it lasts forever. And if it lasts forever, all your sins are paid. Where would you go when you die? To heaven. So can you know you're going to heaven when you die? Yeah. Would you trust Christ right now as your only hope of going to heaven? Let's pray, shall we? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If you're here this morning, and maybe you've never understood it before. Maybe you've been religious all your life. Heard all about it. But you never really trusted Christ as your Savior. Would you do that? Would you do it right now? As you said in the word, some believed. Some did not believe. I hope that you're one that will believe it. You see, you can't save yourself. That's why you needed a Savior. Christ died for you. Would you trust him? I'm going to ask in just a moment for a raise of hands. But raising your hand doesn't save you. It's just to let me know that what I said made sense to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to have you forward. But right where you're sitting, in the quietness of this moment, the head bowed and eyes closed, is there anyone to say, yes, preacher, that made sense to me. I want to know that I'm going to heaven when I die. And right now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm going to trust him to take me to heaven whenever I die. Would you do that? If you will, would you just slip your hand up very quickly and put it right back down? Just slip it up real quick, put it right back down. Yes, God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Anyone else? Just real quick, just slip it up, put it right back down. Other others? Wait just a moment. It's the most important thing you will ever do in your whole life. You need to be sure. You're not trusting me. You're not trusting the church. I'm not going to pin you against the wall. I'm not going to make you walk the aisle or sign a card. I just want you to trust Christ as your Savior. And I want to know if I can have prayer for you. Anyone else before we close? Anyone else? Our Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. For the free gift of eternal life. And I thank you, Lord, for the one that indicated by an uplifted hand that they would trust you as their Savior. By doing so, they become your child. You guarantee them eternal life, and they can know they're going to heaven when they die. We ask your blessings upon each person here and each family.